Welcome to Zooming with the Alderman, a series of interviews sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Chicago. My name is Judy Schindler. Founded 101 years ago, uh, right here in Chicago, the League is a nonpartisan political organization which encourages the informed and active participation of citizens in government. It works to increase understanding of major public policy issues and influences public policy through education and advocacy. The League is one of hundreds of local leagues all across the country. These interviews with the Aldermen are part of our efforts to educate people about those who represent us, those who represent us by setting the policies and ordinances that govern us here in Chicago. Today, our guest is Alderman Leslie Hairston of the Fifth Ward. Welcome, Alderman Hairston. Thank you, Judy. So happy to be here with you. And we appreciate the time you're taking to be with us. Yes, I, 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 I've got to say, I love the Zoom. <laughs> and we all. It's become part of our life. It is part of our life. Uh, please note that the Zoom session is being recorded and will be available for viewing after today on the League website. We'll be sending you uh, and everyone who registered for this program who's not a member a link to the video when it becomes available. Also, everyone should know that we've provided the Alderman a copy of the questions I'll be asking ahead of time. Before starting those questions, we want to show you a map of all 50 wards in Chicago. And I wonder if you could point out where the fifth ward is. There you go. So you're close to the lake. You're on the south side. Can now, could you show us a map of the fifth ward, Hannah? Okay, let's get started. Alderman, can you describe your ward? Where is it? What are the main boundaries? What neighborhoods does it include? So um, it includes the neighborhoods of Hyde Park, South Shore, Woodlawn, and Greater Grand Crossing. Um, the easternmost boundary, this is the easiest part, is, is the lake. Uh, the northernmost boundary is 49th Street. The southernmost boundary on the east side is the South Shore Cultural Center. And on the west side is 79th and South Chicago. So this is a wonderful cultural area. It is. A, it, I think it is one of the most diverse uh, wards in the city. Um, and we have people from all around the world. Uh, we have everybody from, from any stratosphere. Um, so it, it makes it a wonderful place, not just to live, but to, um, to represent. And what are the key issues facing the people of your ward? Or are there a number of issues because it's so diverse? Well, because of its diversity, there are always issues. Um, but I think the number one on everybody's radar right now is the violence and uh, the violence that is plaguing the city, the violence that is plaguing um, our neighborhoods, the uh, large number of carjackings. Um, some people may recall uh, this past summer uh, that one of my neighborhoods, the Hyde Park area, um, was one of the sites on, on a mass shooting, on a mass shooting spree. And um, so in a neighborhood that generally um, enjoys it, it, its fair share of crime, but nothing of this magnitude. Um, it, it, it has really um, heightened everybody's sense of safety and security. Um, and uh, when did you first join the city council? I was first elected in 1999. Why did you decide to run for alderman? Um, well, you know, actually, I have lived in this neighborhood and in, in pretty much in the fifth ward my whole life. Um, I grew up here. I went to school here. My parents were here. Um, I'm still a resident here. And I had noticed that there were some changes being made in the neighborhood. 
um, that I, I didn't like. I actually had just returned from um, uh, living in Springfield, Illinois, uh, having worked for the attorney general and then the state's attorney's appellate prosecutor's office. And so I just noticed some changes in my neighborhood and I had always been taught, you know, get involved. If you don't like what you see, get involved. So I started attending CAPS meeting. I started attending uh, the park district meetings. I started uh, attending a lot of other community meetings and, you know, formed a block club. And then somebody said, you should run for office. And I actually laughed. I thought that was the funniest thing I had ever heard. And I remember having a conversation with my mother who said, you know, politics is so dirty. And I said, but I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in making changes. I'm interested in doing good, helping people. And so I told someone that um, I would think about it, never thinking that they would come back to me and remind me. I said, give me six months to think about it. And when six months came, they called me and they said, you're running. And I said, okay. And during, the, during that time, um, I had an opportunity to meet several times with um, Lynn Dupre and with Bob Mann, um, who gave me invaluable um, information and lessons and um, helped me um, un un until, until their deaths. So I, I, I am proud. Um, I, I learned from the best. And then do you have any regrets? Every day, <laughs> every day. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously it's an incredible amount of work. No two days are the same. So it's, it's not a regret. It's, it's how did I get here and why am I still here? Do you have um, employment right now? Pardon me? Do you have any other employment? No, I, I do um, do a summer writing program for law students that I created when I was with the state's attorney's appellate prosecutor's office. So I, I just interview the students at the law school. So it's not really, you know, I'm not a full, I'm not practicing law, um, but I'm still involved in helping young people get educated, uh, making sure that they are exposed to the opportunities that they might not otherwise be exposed to and really helping women and minorities um, navigate the legal system. What, uh, what city council committees do you serve on? I sit on, everybody sits on the rules committee. Um, I sit on the aviation committee. I sit on uh, the budget committee and I'm vice chair of the finance committee. Um, and uh, can you tell me about something of how these, these committees work? Well, they're, they're supposed to be decided by the aldermen, um, but the way that they've worked uh, under every administration that I've been under, uh, the appointments have come by the mayor and have been confirmed by the city council. I think we are one of the few bodies, unlike any other body, where uh, appoint, uh, committee appointments are given at, or are dis determined by seniority, um, and we do not do it that way. Nice. So usually it's somebody that has some allegiance to the administration um, that gets those appointments. Uh, what if any changes would you like to see made in the operations of city council? So I, I think the committee assignments, you know, is one thing. They should not be handed out as, you know, favors. I mean, because the work that we do is, is very serious. Um, and, and I would like to see a more active, a stronger uh, city council. Um, when you say a stronger city council, what do you mean by that? Well, when you talk about the committee appointments, I would actually like to see us meet and to, and to talk about committee assignments and let it come truly from the city council and not from the mayor's office. I see. And how would that change things? Well, I think that you would have people with more experience in, in different uh, positions. I think uh, that it will, it, it allows for more independence, I do believe, because you're not beholden to the fifth floor. I see. Now here's another topic. 
would you be willing to allow applicable departments to make decisions on some of the items that now require ordinances, as long as your office or any alderman was consulted? For example, uh, parking prohibited designations, loading zones, standing zones, permit parking, uh, traffic warning signs or signals. Um, would you want to see these many of these issues handled by the departments with your uh, okay as opposed to everything coming to you? With well, that? I don't. I don't worry about. Um, I don't worry about when they are are not coming to me. What I do worry about is the people that are living um, in the neighborhood having a voice or having a say. Um, you know, it, it is, there are some things that, you know, people may or may not want in their neighborhood um, and they should have a voice and that's what they elected the alderman to do. Um, I've seen during my, this is my third administration, um, I've seen ways in which the collaboration between the alderman and the city departments has been good and I've also seen it where it has not been good. And um, at the end of the day, the alderman is the one, whether things go good, bad, or otherwise, we wear the hat. And so I think it's important to have uh, the alderman be a part of it uh, because he or she speaks for their residents. I see, it's a good point. Um, the league has long supported an independent commission to draw ward boundaries rather than the aldermen themselves determining it. Would you support the concept of creating an independent commission to draw the next set of ward boundaries? So I think on, on that one, I would have to say it depends on how the commission is selected. Um, in Chicago, politics is a part of everything. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if we recall, um, part of drawing the ward boundaries is to make sure that voters are not disenfranchised and that there is representation. So in, in, in communities of color, it is important that they have uh, the right numbers in order to that they can have elected representation. So that would be the only caution. And that's something that I think uh, actually being an alderman actually brings a lot because we know the communities and just looking at the numbers does not tell you who these people are that are in these communities. So if this commission were, um, were required to interview communities, would, would that solve that issue or would it be the makeup of a commission that would solve the issue? It, it possibly could. I mean, again, I've always represented an independent ward. So some of the gerrymandering that goes on um, has not happened. And then also because of where my, my uh, ward is located. Um, I can't go any further east because I have the lake. Park. Uh -huh. So, I'm, so it, it, it's different for me. I would not um, have a problem with that. Um, however, I do believe that there is value. So I'd like to see, you know, maybe a hybrid where it's collaborative. Oh, interesting. That's a great idea. Um, here's another issue. Are you familiar with ranked uh, choice voting? I am. I actually am. Um, it was actually um, a topic uh, during the uh, last uh, presidential can. Uh, President, uh, presidential <laughs> presidential election, one of the candidates uh, was an advocate. And while I was uh, doing my research looking, I, I think that um, at, at the federal level, it, it, it's been mostly applied. Uh, looking at it locally, um, I think, again, there is some merit to that. Um, uh, for our audience, I, I'd like to explain that Currently, that one uh, when one candidate for mayor or alderman does not receive 50% plus one vote in the February election, then the top two vote getters are mandated to the uh, to a runoff election on another ballot in April. Uh, but with ranked voting, you uh, voters would select their first, second, or third, fourth choices, and so there would would not have to be a runoff. Um, the votes would be counted that way. Um, is that something you think you might support locally? I, I, I actually would support that. 
I would support that. Um, as someone um, who was in a runoff in the last election, um, it's an incredible amount of money um, and, you know, still paying debt. <laughs> um, you know, but also I think it, um, how, how do I want to put this? Um, it, it, it prevents people from some of the politics that's gone on in the city of Chicago by putting a candidate up to be a spoiler. Mm -hmm. it, oh, it, yes. right. right. So I think that on a local level, because those are tactics that has, have been used in the past. Um, I think it also uh, cuts down on negative campaigning. Um, so what happens from the, the first, during the first part of the election, and if there's a runoff, the increase in the amount of negativity um, increases. So I think that there would be an opportunity for less negative campaigning. Very good. And, and it would be least, uh, not as expensive. Also a good point. Yes, yes. So if the league uh, were to support one of your initiatives, uh, what would you like us to support and what steps would you recommend that we take? So I've given that a lot of thought and there are a lot of things that you all could support, but I think the one that would resonate most um, is uh, the Anjanette Young Ordinance, uh, which I am one of the sponsors, one of the lead sponsors of. And basically it prevents no-knock warrants mm. by the police department. And as we have seen in the case of Miss Young, um, you know, other than the fact that it was the wrong address and they told her that, but the fact that she was left standing there for many minutes uncovered is reprehensible, is reprehensible. And so one of the things that I recommended straight off, which I think has been adopted is that if there is a female on site, there needs to be a female officer present. There was no way that this woman should have been in a room for upwards of 20 minutes, unclothed with all these men and with their guns drawn. You know, it, it makes, the other thing that the ordinance does is it prevents the police from pointing guns at kids in a house. So I, I, I'd be happy to forward you a copy um, to join on. Um, right now, it is in the Public Safety Committee. Um, we have not been given a date when there will be a hearing. Um, but since then, the, the administration and the police superintendent have put some policy out there that is not strong at all. And so what I am, would encourage you to do now is the public comment period. It's open for 15 days. And I would go on there and I would tell them to support the Anjanette Young Ordinance that's co-sponsored by myself, Alderman Sophia King of the Fourth Ward, Alderman Maria Haddon, and I forget, I want to say Alderman Jeanette Taylor of the 20th Ward. That's wonderful. All right, well, thank you very much. That's a great answer. Um, so what are several things you would like to get done besides the uh, this ordinance, what else would you like to get it done or at least started during the remainder of your term? Uh, so as of, as of yesterday, and you'll be hearing more about this, um, we do have a citizen oversight uh, of the police agreement uh, between the two organizations, uh, CPAC or the coalitions, uh, CPAC and, and GAPA, which each had different ways, but they came together and have created an ordinance which will be um, released uh, shortly. So um, I would like to see that. That's been six years in the making. Um, it's got thousands of supporters. And I think that uh, we need that civilian oversight over the police department. Um, I've been advocating for it for more than 10 years. Um, but to actually, usually it just dies in committee. So this time that there's an actual chance to, for it to come to the floor for a vote, I think that that's very important. Um, I'd also like to see some things happen in my ward. Um, you know, we're uh, hopefully this year we will have the groundbreaking of the Obama Presidential Center, uh, which is a great opportunity. And I have been working and the community has been working 
uh, for years now to, to make sure that we are getting jobs, that we are training people, uh, that we are able to turn our neighborhood into a more thriving neighborhood uh, with opportunities and benefits for all. I think it's going to be a wonderful boon to the city of Chicago for tourism. I do think that people will come specifically to Chicago for that. So, well, I think that's great, but let's not forget the Museum of Science and Industry is right next door to it. Right. Um, so I, you know, I am, I'm, I'm very proud. I'm, I'm a proud fifth warder. Um, and just the opportunity to, to see a vibrant community again. Um, I am so excited about that. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Alderman Harrison. Thank you so much for being with us today. Um, it's been very enlightening and I've certainly enjoyed it. Uh, and I wanna remind everyone that a link to this program will be found on the Chicago League's website. And everyone who's registered for today's program who's not a League member will receive an email with the link along with an invitation to join the League and to sign up for notices for future programs. We hope you will join us for future Zooming with the Alderman programs.